Some, some great inspiration there. Um, I'd now like to introduce um, our final keynote speaker of the, of the morning, Monique Moreau, who is the uh, Chief Technology Officer at Cisco Services. And uh, Monique has a passion for innovation uh, and a passion for promoting women in technology and many other things. She's been on the road for about seven weeks, she told me this morning. So uh, we're very pleased to have her here with us and uh, to share her insights. Uh, Monique, the floor is yours. Thank you so very much and um, great... Uh Great, out, uh, great presentations from, uh, from Thierry and Mike. Actually, uh, they, uh, they teed me up uh, quite nicely. I think uh, for you, Thierry, there are people, companies in the United States that think they could actually have uh, email days off. Uh, and I love the way you are actually innovating. So um, I really want to thank uh, the uh, Digit Director General, St uh, Stephen Quest, and my esteemed guests for being invited here to talk to you about this culture of innovation. So if there's one thing you're going to take away from my presentation today, it's the organization. You need to have the, the, the boldness to actually move yourselves. And so it's all, you have technologies as, as enablers, but the culture is also going to be about you. Let me frame up just a few minutes uh, before I actually go to the heart of my presentation of what that could look like, because as a company, my company, Cisco, is going through its own transformation and innovation uh, as we speak. It's a company of 30 years old. It's a company of circa 75,000 people globally. So in the world of real time, and we've heard this notion of real time, the relationship between supplier and customer is blurring. It's blurring. In fact, this world, could, uh, we can call it uh, so-called uh, co-innovation partnership, if you will. We talk in now the language about business outcomes. It's going to be about the outcome at the end of the day. Much of these principles are actually captured, and, and you'll see this later, in a book uh, that is actually the, the lingua franca of my company today, which is Consumption Economics, The New Rules of Tech, written by J.B. Wood et al. So this linear process that we all know of developing is actually going away. In fact, it's talking about real time. We used to make money on complexity and monetizing complexity. Let me suggest it's all this all about the user experience, the customer experience at the end of the day. So we talk about agile uh, in software development, but we are now going to talk about agile, as has been previously stated, organizations. You have to be agile. Agile. So organizations, really, the value is not around iterating on only on service development, but what has changed the model, if you will, my esteemed ladies and gentlemen, is that in how an organization works rather than what it develops. So we will talk about software divine X, and we'll talk about open X, and we'll talk about the Internet of Things, and big data and analytics capturing business insights and in business intelligence real time such that somebody has to do something and obviously cybersecurity. So then there's this notion of what do you do to scout for technologies. You know, recently I was actually in this think tank environment and we had all types of people from, in the, from various types of organizations. They were actually science fiction authors and they were actually academics. And it was very interesting how we actually challenged one another. So, there is no doubt, before I start my uh, presentation, that real time will disrupt you. There is no doubt about it. There are companies that are producing capabilities every three days to one hour. Every three days to one hour. So capturing a relentless, relentless customer uh, perspective mapped to your business models, and you have customers, as we know, will be pivotal. Perhaps the scarce resource that you will come to the conclusion at the end of the day will be the people, not the jobs. Let me challenge you, will be the people, not the jobs. It's about creating a common nar narrative and vision. And a common, to na common narrative and vision is what you can do. Power is vertical, but the sweet pot, swat, uh, spot, if you will, is horizontal. Many of the needed skills are not taught today. Because what we're looking for is actually a background in multidiscipline, 
multidiscipline. We've heard this before, a multidiscipline background. So what is the culture of innovation going to look like? Can you fail without consequences? It's not about micromanaging you. We always talk in my company about creating this culture to try and try again. It's an entrepreneurial environment. So the situation is, you know, we have uh, less than half of the OECD countries are in the workforce. Only one-third of them are engaged in this work. Less than a quarter of the U U.S., for example, human capacity is creating value in the economy. What if, question, what if you were, you, all of you, were to create innovative entrepreneurs? You being the inter inter innovative entrepreneurs yourself. So the profile that I'm seeing that is desired here, think about the letter T. Deep in a couple of areas, technically, but broad across. You have to be able to see the bigger picture. That's really what is really desired here. We can talk about digital cognitive assistance and creating our own jobs, but this is really what's needed. So in my world, you can imagine changes everywhere. It's fast. It's fast. In fact, uh, we are looking at how there's not only about how we disrupt ourselves from an organization, and what I said before, the organization is going to be very important here. Technologies are only the enablers. It's what you're going to do with it. We've heard this before. We have now, um, un, you know, unemployment is on everybody's mind. What are the skill sets? I often think of, you know, this, this Roman, ancient Roman slave ship, and, and you have this person sort of uh, giving you the rhythm, and if you don't have the right skill, you're actually thrown out of the boat. That's not what we want to create, ladies and gentlemen. Not at all. So we have youth. We have tremendous amount of youth who are here, who are the millennials. What, are your, what is your millennial strategy, by the way? I'm asked that. What is your millennial strategy? We have women who need to be part of this, this great change. So the organization is agile, and I think, in terms of my Swiss colleague, Peter Glor, who's at MIT, he thinks in swarm. Think about swarm organizations. What is swarm? What is the first thing that comes to mind? Bees. Zzz. Because they swarm. They swarm in the right, they're agile. That's exactly the type of organization we have to think about. So this is the lingua franca. Disintermediation has been happening. This is in the language of my company. So it's not about so much about products, but rather services for the 21st century. It is an outcome-based dialogue. We're talking about outcome-based. And that's different from my company. They're not used to this. They're not used to this dialogue at all. And so the key here for you is also about how you induce this culture of service innovation. Remember one thing, it's not a linear process anymore. It's very real time. We've heard this real time, real time. And so we are being challenged ourselves in actually looking at how we transform ourselves into real time. Look at your citizens. Look at your citizens. They grow up. Coding in Python at the age of five. In fact, I, I, met, uh, they, I met, we had actually a nice contest here in Brussels where girls were involved in creating their own application. They were 12 years old. Now, that's your citizen, okay? I have a, I have a niece, um, she's, five, she's actually, at age five, she was able to hack passwords into her house, from her house. Her father didn't figure out how she was doing it, but she did. So these are the dynamics. These are the dynamics. So you have to be in tune with your citizens, ladies and gentlemen. So when we talk about innovation, this culture of innovation, mainly what you will note here of this, from this pictorial, it's, it's about the organization at the end of the day. I don't want to be micromanaged. I want to be able to feel that I can do something. I want to have this sort of um, so entrepreneur environment. Stephen, when are we going to have wireless? Between now and 2018, as I told you this morning. Okay. Right. Is that agile? Okay. So, so <laughs> there you go. We have, so quo vadis, we have to move the paradigm, ladies and gentlemen, from five to ten years. We have to stimulate, the, you know, this economy, this 
great European economy. And we have to balance between that notion of automation and also the notion of what we have for the citizen. I think Copernicus was wrong. I think Copernicus was wrong, if you know Copernicus. The sun was not the center of the solar uh, universe, if you will, or the solar system, but rather, if you think about where we're going now, the connected human being is the connect, uh, really the connected human being in a fully digital society. Think about the notion of where we're going with wearables. So what does that mean? In fact, we are the internet and there is the open internet. We are the open internet. So now, let's look at the internet of everything, take a step forward where we're actually focused on for the next couple of minutes. So how does the internet of everything stimulate innovation? Well, we think of everything. Now I would say, with the internet of everything, you probably have to have an administer of everything. We have to think about that at the end of the day. But you have machine to machine, you have machine to person, you have person to persons. And you have to look at all of the value chain that we have here with everything being smart. We have smart connected cities, we have this digital corridor, we have all of this that is going to, and in, in fact today is affecting what we do, uh, whether it's parking, whether it's how we work, uh, whether it's where we, you know, what happens in terms of defense, etc. It's all over the place, the internet of everything. With it, you get data, you get big data. You have to do something with that data. You have to turn it around, visualize it, and actually offer something of the notion of business intelligence. So how do we become ready in your environment for public sector? Well, we heard that you, uh, that, you know, there's this whole notion of e-government, you're able to pay your taxes online, you're able to actually have this facilitation that's online because it's all about benefiting the citizens at the end of the day. We need to look at how we impart that capability. We need to think about the usage from my perspective as a citizen, what that means. We also need to think about, you know, how many of you have had switch off your lights before you go out before and then having the lights automatically go out? You know, I work in a company that that is the case. There's energy usage, there's energy monitoring, there's energy monitoring that would give it to me in, in the home, showing how much I'm using in my energy and perhaps giving me some level of a rebate because I am being very careful. But this is where we have to go, is really becoming very, very, this is our society in terms of being able to have this smart and connected capabilities. You know, the culture of, of innovation is going to be, uh, how many of you work in that space on the, on the left, left, the monolithic workspace? You know, about uh, living in a cubicle, etc. to being on the road. Stephen just told you I've been on the road for seven and a half weeks, literally around the world. I want to be, where, connect, I want to have my capability where I want it, when I want it. That's very important. And BYOD, although it's bring your own device, some people will argue it may be bring your own disaster. That will be on the security side of the house, but I think that's the balance that we have. But the notion is we are always moving. We're very, move we're very moving and we want to have those capabilities. Think about it. Are you benefiting your citizen by making your citizen look like, the, is, that, is that the right, right outcome that we desire? Versus, for example, looking at how the citizen, how you can create opportunities for the citizen that is really important, you know, that they can come in, they don't even have to come in if they don't want to, it's really tailored for them. They don't have to wait and be, be actually that slave on a Roman slave ship. Because this is your opportunity to change that paradigm. You need to do that. This is about the citizen experience and your customers, with all due respect, are your citizens. So how are we walking the talk in a company that's transforming itself, a culture of innovation? Well, we are in the midst of our uh, transformation. After 30 years, we have global innovation centers and centers here in Europe. That's extremely important because you have to create that innovation. We cannot, cannot, on peut pas, do that ourselves. So we have 
hackathons, or the proper term, codeathons. You know, uh, code experience, internal, external, whatever your app is, create the environment. Whatever the problem space is, whatever the use is, let's do that together. Now, that's new for us. That's absolutely new. And it's absolutely important that we, 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 we create that environment. We actually do it, we blend, we close those silos uh, organizationally. I think this is our great opportunity. And if you want to scout for technologies, we also look at that. But that doesn't mean that technologies are going to be the lever. They may be used as a tool. They give you sort of a, a viewpoint. You know, what are you doing in neural brain-to-brain -brain communications and research therein? But it's actually looking at what are the implications, well, how are you going to use them for the organization that you want in terms of the application, really, it's the application that's going to be desired. So this is confluence of what we need to do in the 21st century. In fact, we have something called entrepreneurs in residence. You have the maker generation, it's public. We have an investment. They can come out of the university. They can all, we already be in, in a startup mode. And by the way, when we talk about startups and millennials, they want, let's add art to STEM, please, right? STEAM is now STEAM, it's not STEM anymore. So you have now this maker generation that's in the process. It's not a linear thing, it's happening today. And I think this is the, the, the culture that you want to, to capture at the end of the day. So as I conclude, you know, one of the things that we have to think about in the next, you need to think about in the next five to 10 years is the notion of how you're going to have the swarm organization tenant, really, agile as a tenant. Let's look at, how, look at, your, audio, look at your citizens. Where, what is your millennial strategy? What are you doing to bring more women to the table here also? I think this is very, very key. I traveled the world, and this is a global, 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 global issue. And partnering, I think, more with public and private, I think this is where we can co-invest. And I believe strongly, esteemed guests, that innovation can be foundational to creating a new X economy that is absolutely inclusive of, its ex of its, all of its citizens, where we no longer have to deal with the Roman slave ship and throwing people out because they don't have the right skill. Thank you. <laughs>